Welcome everyone to the L7C podcast, Dragon Ball edition. We are going to be reviewing Dragon Ball manga chapter number 66 and talking about the moral arc in general. And today we are in person with the Dragon Ball expert, Mitch Oso. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing pretty good, Martin. Finally glad to actually have you here uh, at uh, my home. Hopefully the uh... My home has treated you uh, as a welcome guest. I believe I've cleaned it up pretty well, so mm-hmm. hopefully I can actually keep it clean uh, once uh, you depart. So, but yeah, good to actually have you here, man. Yeah, last time I was here, I was helping move in the stuff, so it was pretty cool to come and see how you guys put the house together. You guys have put it together really, really well. And uh, to our producer, Justin, yes, my house does look clean compared <laughs> to when you saw my apartment after I had your room enough looking for stuff. So, uh, yes. It's a lot different than what you saw. Yes, yes it is. But let's get right into it. Dragon Ball chapter uh, number 66 dropped Friday at around 11 a.m. And it concluded the two-year fight with Moro. So as I just said, this fight's been going on for two years. It just concluded. And Mitch, just take it away and talk about the highlights of the chapter. And we'll go from there. All right, let's talk about what's going on. So the chapter starts off. You see the Z fighters, uh, you know, minus Goku, off in the distance. They have been recovered by Dende, and they are discussing the battle between Moro and Goku. And Gohan states that um, as they are watching the fight, that something uh, about the planet um, feels different, uh, and that is because Moro has fused with the planet, and they're not aware of that. And then Gohan states that his body hurts um, all of a sudden out of nowhere. And Vegeta, you know, with his previous experience fighting Moro, knows that Moro is absorbing um, everybody's energy. Um, He informs all the fighters to um, uh, get off the ground um, so they fly up so that Moro cannot um, absorb any of their energy. And the the next... Um, stills that we see here, Moro is draining all of the life on Earth, including all of the citizens of Earth. And then the chapter goes back to Goku and Moro, and Moro is claiming that, uh, you know, he's all powerful, he has all the energy. And they, um, they show the scenes of Goku and Moro fighting, and Goku's just, you know, easily dodging all of. Moro's attacks, even though Moro is the Earth himself, he's sprouting huge arms to punch Goku, he even surprises Goku with a third arm mm-hmm. um, out of the planet, and he goes on to tell Goku, well, I am the planet itself, you have nowhere left to run, and then he sprouts like, you know, seven arms by Goku, and Goku keeps dodging, and then the scene pans over to Beerus, Weiss, Krillin, and Jocko. And to paraphrase, um, Beerus is stating that this isn't looking good, and he's going to step in. Oh, to, so excited. Um, I know, right? This so is like, excited. We're, we're, we're sitting here, and this is what we've been wanting. We want Beerus to come in mm-hmm. and actually show us something that we have not seen since he actually, well, in the anime, fought Goku at the beginning of Super or whenever he was actually fighting the other gods of destruction in the exhibition match, mm-hmm. or whenever he Akai to Azamasu. So, here we are, getting excited. Beerus is going to finish the job for Goku. Then all of a sudden, you know, we get a buzz kill here when Whis gets a call from the Grand Priest saying that uh, he wants Beerus and Whis to show up at his uh, palace. So, they leave, they depart. Beerus says to Krillin and all them, figure out your own issues, and prior to them leaving, though, um, Whis um, teleports over to Goku in the middle of their fight and tells him that the only way to defeat Moro is to once again shatter his forehead crystal, thereby releasing Maris's power. Um, one thing that we discussed was we didn't understand why mm-hmm. when Maris destroyed the crystal, why that didn't kill more of them in there and now this time um when if goku destroys the crystal um it will defeat moro it must just be because of mirus's immense power 
maybe it uh, just causes them to well just perish. Also on that panel too, just to show the supreme power difference between Goku and Whis, how Whis casually came in and blocked one of Moro's punches with like his pinky. Yeah, exactly. that was a cool shot. Even though Goku is an ultra instinct, he actually has to cross his arms to block the attack of Moro's giant fist. Whereas Whis, not looking in the direction of Moro's other fist coming at him, literally holds his left pointer finger and to block him. his attack. So um, even then, Whis, you can see how much significantly more powerful he is to even a mastered Ultra Instinct. Mm -hmm. At least that's what we do from that. And um, Goku basically starts to doubt whether he can actually do it. And Whis tells him, have faith in your own strength. You have divine power in you. Mm -hmm. So just, just do it, right? Well, then Beerus yells, kind of, you know, in a, it's kind of a uh, kind of breaks running, the tension. Running story of the yeah, Dragon Ball. Running thing. story of Beerus. Yeah, it kind of breaks the tension, but oh well. Um, says that even if the planet is destroyed, and again, he's saying this to Goku, you better save me some Earth food. You hear me? And then. Mm -hmm. Goku chuckles, and then bam, they're gone. So then, then the uh, pan shows uh, Goku on the ground, looking at Moro. Moro looks like a hillside with his head and horns protruding out of the ground and whatnot. And Goku sees the crystal is slowly um, getting buried into the earth mm -hmm. as Moro is trying to hide it away from Goku. And Goku's about to go and attack, and here we go. Vegeta's on his way to, uh, you know, save the day or set everyone else for success. And Vegeta shows up, and then he starts punching the ground, um, doing his um, for, or his uh, forced spirit vision. Mm -hmm. I had to make sure I said it correctly. Um, to uh, separate all of the energy that Moro is taking from the Earth, so then the crystal itself doesn't get hidden away. He causes it to be more exposed, and. Um, what we learn, though, is that while Vegeta is separating the power from Moro, Moro is still absorbing power from everything touching the Earth. Mm -hmm. So there's this internal struggle that Vegeta is trying to separate all the power from Moro, while Moro is taking energy away from Vegeta himself. Vegeta tells Goku, um, get to it, and uh, Goku powers up a very powerful punch, and he sprints towards Moro. Moro trying to die or prevent Goku from doing that, tries to catch him with all of his arms and some of the pans. Goku just literally is dodging and then just blasts right through the palm of all of Moro's hands and almost gets there. And then at the very last second, Moro is able to catch Goku because Goku can't go through all of the pans. Mm -hmm. So, and then um, Goku is getting his energy drained as well now that he is being held by Moro. And and uh, as they're doing that, um, Goku will actually in the next pan. Goku doubts that he actually can still do it because he doesn't have enough god power. Drops and, back to normal, right? Uh, in the next pan, but right before that, Krillin states, um, as he's observing the fight, that he couldn't reach the crystal as he ran out of god power, and Jocko has this realization of something. In which then um, Jocko disappears, says he tells Grunley he has to go run an errand, and um, then he's, uh, oops, I'm going the wrong way on my screen shots here, and then he just disappears, right? And Goku, as Martin said, reverts back to his base form, and Vegeta's like, oh no, and all this stuff, but then the other Z fighters show up, and Piccolo asks um, Vegeta the question, um, about his uh, spirit vision, can Vegeta do it in reverse? And and uh, what he wants to do is gather up all of their energy and then use Vegeta's power to give it to Goku. Um, personally, we're going to discuss that because I think that's kind of strange. But well, so they give all of their energy to Goku, right? And then Piccolo tells the people on the lookout, like Dende, to donate their powers, and Goten and Trunks, while they're on 17th Island protecting the animals, 
they donate their power to, and then Vegeta gives that power to Goku after even he gives his own power to it, which is a kind of uncharacteristic of Vegeta to give away energy at first. Oh well. Then Goku gets the energy, um, it's super powered, but he turns into his Super Saiyan Blue form and not Ultra Instinct. Uh, Piccolo knows that that's not good um, because um, Ultra Instinct is what they need. And um, we come to learn that for Goku to actually go back into Ultra Instinct, he needs God Power to do so. Um, kind of strange in my eyes that. Vegeta's uh, Super Saiyan Blue form is not, you know, enough God power for him. Uh, I actually wanted to, when you brought that up, to talk about that, because even non-canically, the first Broly movie, when they were fighting Go Teen Gohan at the time, Trunks, Piccolo, they were giving their energy to Goku, mm -hmm. and then that wasn't, it's still not enough to beat Broly, but when Vegeta gave it, it was more than enough to beat Broly. And then even on now here in Super, I'm assuming also Vegeta wasn't even at Super Saiyan Blue. I'm assuming he was at Super Saiyan Blue Evolution or Super Saiyan Blue Evolved. And to think that he's fully healed and everyone else is giving their energy and plus his and that's not enough to go even Ultra Instinct Omen. That kind of, I felt like it was just a plot device for what you're about to talk about next. Because it makes no sense to me that everyone was fully healed. Vegeta's at Super Saiyan Blue Evolution, which is above Super Saiyan Blue and per perfected Super Saiyan Blue, and that wasn't enough. That puzzled me. Now, just just to confirm, now, the manga chapter that we're reading is not in color. That comes no. later on. Mm -hmm. Now, that is what I'm looking at. Would you agree? Is Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. That's not a normal Super Saiyan. No, that's Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. Yeah, Super Saiyan Blue. That, that's divine energy mm -hmm. right there. It's beyond even Super Saiyan Blue, so... Right. so um, this divine energy that even Vegeta's donating is apparently not either enough or not what Goku needs to go into Ultra Instinct. Mm -hmm. All right. So but, oh, but to point on your point on that, too, because I also want to bring up the anime, what they did that. Because remember, Vegeta was, anime-wise, he was at the last of his energy because he did the final explosion to beat Topo. And when he was trying to do his last stand against Jiren, and when Jiren knocked him out, and this is Vegeta not healed at all, shot a little baby blast to Goku, and that was able to get Goku off the ground to Super Saiyan Blue, just that tiny blast. So to think that a fully healed Vegeta can't get him to at least Omen, it's kind of yeah. ridiculous. But. Yeah, that, uh, that part doesn't make sense. Um, I also, um, before we hop back into the remainder of the chapter, I don't understand why they were using Vegeta to donate their energy, because I feel like we've seen in other mediums that they can just donate their energy mm -hmm. yep. freely to whatever. So I mean, just think of it like the spirit bomb. Or... So they got the spirit bomb. They put their hands up and mm -hmm. they donate their energy. Um, we can talk about in the anime when, like you said, Vegeta literally threw his own energy at Goku before mm -hmm. he got knocked out mm -hmm. to give Goku that second life. And you go back to the, the first Dragon Ball mm -hmm. Broly movie. Um, all of the Z fighters were donating their energy to Goku, mm -hmm. and then Goku got his last little bit from Vegeta, mm -hmm. and then defeated Broly. Uh, no force spirit fission in any of that. Mm -hmm. Reverse spirit, but whatever. And so, um, I, don't, I don't understand why that is needed for this one, but hey, they're just trying to connect Vegeta into the end of this arc so that he can be a hero. Cool. Well, with that being said, what happens? Um, you see that Goku doesn't have enough energy, right? And the people on the lookout are, they're exhausted too because they donated their powers. Mm -hmm. Then they says his divine power is still developing, so it didn't help much. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, here comes Jocko. Jocko asks Bulma, where's Majin Buu? We need his power. Bulma points to where he's at. Uh, the screen goes back to Moro. And Goku basically is admitting that this is his fault. Still, Piccolo says it's over. Uh, Yamcha has an idea as to if the Z Fighters could just leave Earth and go get the Super Dragon Balls and fix everything once Moro explodes. Um, but Krillin says that's not 
work as Moro explodes, the galaxy goes with him. I'm curious if they're actually trying to say galaxy or universe. I would think universe. Yeah, I, th- I think I think universe because we're all these guys are at a power level that could destroy the universe, as mm-hmm. stated in other mediums. Like Beerus can destroy a universe. Mm-hmm. Um, they have stated that you know when Beerus and Champa were fighting, that their fight could destroy the universe. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I think that was anime, and and because of Moro's explosion that's imminent, it would destroy the Super Dragon Balls that are located in Universe Seven. Yep. So, yep. Uh, and everyone kind of accepts their defeat, and Yamcha is sad that he's going to die a bachelor. Um, mm-hmm. And then Tien Tien states, "Hey, we might as well go." Over, you know, either be with Goku or assist Goku because he shouldn't have to die like that, you know, in Moro's grip there. And then out of nowhere, out of nowhere, um, Chaozu, who's there as well, um, he looks up and he sees a huge, massive ball of energy that shows up out of nowhere. Catches everyone off guard, off, completely surprised. Vegeta um, completely caught off guard and doesn't know where it came from, and Goku, in the clutches of Moro, says to himself that he feels the divine strength of that energy. And then, and then um, Vegeta is completely confused, wondering how this ridiculous amount of energy came to be, and doesn't know who sent it. Mm-hmm. And then we see out in um, somewhere else on Earth um, the Photos show a village, and mm-hmm. then we see Majin Buu, or should I say the Grand Supreme Kai, he took time. over Majin Buu's body like what he did back in one of the early, uh, late chapters of the, um, of the moral arc. He finds Oob. Yep. And has Oob donating energy towards this cause. Now, the reason why they're doing that is because since Oob is a reincarnation of Kid Buu, Back in, again, one of the early chapters of the Moro arc, it was stated that Kid Buu received god powers when Kid or Majin Buu and that evil Buu had split. Mm-hmm. And then he was destroyed by Goku's spirit bomb. So, so with the uh, Grand Supreme Kai having reincarnation of Kid Buu donate his powers, that's how they were able to receive the divine energy that he needs. And um, so now in the screens here, Jocko is still on the lookout. So we don't know if Jocko told Majin Buu to go find Oob or if Majin Buu had awakened and instantly knew that's what he needed to do. So he went to Oob. Um, but um, a Grand Spring Kai um, is again with Oob, and Oob is like, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Um, I don't know what I'm doing, and he says, yes, that's perfect, uh, thank you, and sorry for the sudden trouble. You know, big, pinkish, whatever color guy just comes out of the door and just yep. says, like, hey, can you donate energy to an unknown cause, even mm-hmm. though you're, like, four years old or mm-hmm. however old he is? And, uh, Vegeta then, um, takes this new divine energy, throws it right at Goku, and with, you know, the hype now is uh, whoever's key this is, uh, take it and use it for another round of Ultra Instinct. Mm-hmm. And then it hits Goku. And the energy is so immense that even though Moro has his hands clutched around Goku, Goku uses his like energy to create, as Martin would describe, as a... A Megazord of himself. A Megazord. The, the best description of it. Um, Goku creates a energy duplication himself, mm-hmm. and and the, this uh, giant Megazord Goku then splits the grip of Moro, and he's holding Moro in place, and everyone's in shock by what they're looking. For. Um, and in the middle of this energy aura, you know, version of Goku is well, Goku in his Ultra Instinct form. And he gathers his composure, and he um, then winds up his punch, and he dashes towards Moro, 
like in Moro's hands from now is two partners. I don't know where his other hands went. Her um, being held by the energy aura. Goku, and then Goku punches the crystal, shattering it um, in some pretty sweet um, depictions. Whis, um, while he's traveling away from Earth, looks back, smiles, knowing that Goku succeeded. And then the crystal gets destroyed. Moro collapses um, and seems to crumble and disintegrate. And then there's a, a, a explosion, and everyone gathers themselves and asks what happened. And the, they look over, and there's Goku standing in the rubble where Moro's uh, body was, or his, you know, his depiction of the Earth was. And Goku looks back and gives a thumbs up, indicating that Moro's been defeated. And that is how the chapter ends. So. I'll tell, I'll tell you one thing that was good about this. You know, we weren't expecting that Oob was going to be involved. No, like this. he was. He was the biggest shocker. I know. Probably in recent Dragon Ball Super chapters memory. So he was the biggest mm-hmm. shocker. No one, no one predicted Oob. Um, shoot, no one even predicted uh, the Grand Supreme Kai to wake up in time to. Contribute, so we that was hoped. super good. Yeah, we hoped, we, we hoped. hoped, but they didn't show that in any of the previous chapters. So, like what we discussed, we thought he was actually going to show up on the battlefield. Mm-hmm. So we didn't get that, but there's not, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, them incorporating Boo for the divine energy is, I, I, I applaud that. I think that was a nice original. Yeah. You know, to- I guess to get Oob involved and then to then, if they're still trying to keep on track, to still have the same ending as Z with Goku picking Oob, that adds more to his reasoning. But I'm still stuck on the divine energy because we were talking about it before recording about the Ultra Instinct because it contradicts everything from the Tournament of Power, I guess, too, because every time we saw Goku get Ultra Instinct, he was... Tired, beat down, past his limits. So, like, someone giving him this jolt of energy, it just felt different. Because the previous Ultra Instinct times, he was, like, well past his limits. And then he just shatters. This time, they're like, oh, now we need God energy to go Ultra Instinct. And you talked about it before. It's like, that changes what Ultra Instinct is. Now you need God energy to go Ultra Instinct. So now does someone like the strongest mortal in all the universe is Jiren? Can he not go Ultra Instinct because he doesn't have God energy or like other people like that? Mm-hmm. Those are things I've taken from this chapter. And then I also, looking at it, I don't see 17 and 18 in that circle. Was it just the human Z fighters and Piccolo and Gohan? Or like, where were they at? Did they just decide to stand on the rock? Yeah, that's actually good. Because good. they have unlimited energy. So okay, they could have just been kept given energy. I just want to know, now that you bring it up, because I didn't think about that, where have they been? Well, 17 and 18 were in the main fight. Yeah, they were. Remember, Remember it was... Because when Goku first showed up, mm-hmm. and then he was Omen um, versus uh, Moro, Moro mm-hmm. he... 17 and 18 were there. You remember that? Yeah, like, well, yeah, they were in the... Elbowed in the back. And, remember, yeah, they were in the main fight. It wasn't even Yansha, Tien, and... Chao well, Chao Tzu, they weren't there, so they just got there, which makes no sense. Krillin got there because he came with the Sensu beans, and that's we talked about that mm-hmm. in Nazi, and we don't have to talk about that, but 17 and 18 were there because they were part of the group. If you remember, that was probably one of the most iconic slides of this Moro arc where Moro absorbed 7 3, Goku was down, Vegeta was down, Gohan was down, Piccolo was down, 17 and 18 were down. That's when Miris came and because yeah. Dende's like, oh, we're about to lose. And that's when Mirrors came. So I was like, where are they at? That's so. true. I actually, I haven't thought about the whereabouts of 17 and 18. Like you said, they were knocked down. Mm-hmm. Mirrors came. Dende healed them. I can't even remember if Dende healed them. Yeah, he did. Because they were on the rock when Goku went mastered Ultra Instinct and he was beaten up. But you never saw them fly away. No, you didn't. So that's so, a plot thing. Yep, so they just totally forgot about to uh, important characters, but mm-hmm. kind of funny how you bring that up. Um, diving back into what you said about, you know, divine power, like, you need to actually be a god of some magnitude to, be able to have Ultra Instinct now. Um, the, 
let's assume that to be true then. So they got the god power from Oob, mm-hmm. who, you know, grants a guy from whatever. And now the question, though, is, is that why was Vegeta's Super Saiyan Blue power, why was that not divine enough for him to be, or to give it to go to? Only, well, only... Are trying to retract the fact that Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan Blue are not divine energies anymore? No, I think they're divine. I think it was only for two things. One, the plot device for Oob to come in. Mm-hmm. And B, honestly, maybe because it wasn't pure divine, because his energy got mixed with the others, so it took away from like the divineness of... That his power, so that could, it. yeah, so diluted it, so that could be the reason why. Or the third one is that he was still doing the stuff on the ground, and that took energy, and he didn't have enough, but I feel like it's all those type of three things. That would make sense on. if it, you know, diluted it. That would uh, make way more sense, and even if, I wonder if they could ever say that, like, it's not Super Saiyan God energy is not completely divine in itself. Because it was created by like mortals, you know, mm-hmm. it's not like the Grand Supreme Kai was created by you know Zeno or whomever. Um, yeah, but now saying that diluted thing, I just thought about. But well, they did the sand ritual with a human woman who just had a one fourth sand fetus inside her. So diluted can't really be the answer either, because the girl was Pan wasn't even born yet, and that was enough to count as a. Yeah. Sand to go super sand god, which is a god, so yeah, probably in that aspect, we're probably diving too deep into it, you know, we're kind of being a little too nitpicky, but it's just kind of funny just to think about what what, what are we trying to what's this message here we're trying to get in these last couple pages of the chat? But I'll tell you what, my favorite page was the Beerus Weiss page because when Beerus is like, Oh, I gotta help now, and he stepped out of that circle, and even Weiss looked at him like, Wait, what? And I was like, yes, let's do it. And then Whis coming in and them leaving the Grand to Grand uh the Grand Priest, which I think is gonna start the next chapter because there's gonna be repercussions for yeah, Maris. So they'll we're definitely going to see that. That's probably how it'll wind down. I hope it also explains more of like why Moro is like who he is. Mm-hmm. Um because we we never got a backstory on Moro other than he was just some evil guy that tried to eat planets and I mean he had a beef with the gods, you yep. know, like like what um Bibbity did. Mm-hmm. Bibbity had a beef with the gods. Moro has a beef with the gods. Dragon Ball Heroes hearts had a beef with the gods. Yeah, but everyone has these beef with gods and uh I just wanna know like why Moro is the way he is. Because I, I can't picture his backstory being, I don't like the gods because they screwed me over. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm going to see that um, mm-hmm. unless it was like, like in his real life. Like one of our earliest predictions was that maybe Moro was the former god of destruction of Universe Seven prior mm-hmm. to Beerus, and Beerus was his angel, and he went rogue. Beerus stopped him because he was just too chaotic. Um, for his job um, that didn't pan out that way, or at least in terms of Miras being his angel. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, maybe maybe they can come out with a backstory of Moro in which maybe he'll be, you know, a god of the um, But probably not. But at least I would answer something about him. Um, now the question that uh, for, for the listeners as Martin um, last week um, do we think that when Weiss and Beerus get to the Grand Priest's um, palace, Beerus is going to be there standing there? Uh, no. Not after seeing that chapter. I mean, that's... No. You mean the one where he vanished? Yeah. And, that, and then now them calling and leaving immediately, and then he's like, oh, he must have found out that he poofed. I think that's what Beerus said. Yeah, I think he's gone. And then Grand Priest is going to... I. I well, I never, hope the chapter starts with that. I really do. Next well, week. They never truly dove into like what the angel laws are all about, other than, you know, an angel using his full powers against a uh, mortal with, wait, without the permission of their god of destruction. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, do you believe that Mor- or Miris is coming back at no. all? 
You no. don't think so? Mm -hmm. I personally, I think he will. That's just a prediction because I think to myself, um, if Mirrors is a angel in training, then when you're training somebody for a new job or whatever it might be, you know, they're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for whatever reason they make those mistakes, it's your job then to train them to make sure that they don't you know, do those mistakes again. Now, maybe Mirrors doesn't come back because whenever he was about to go full power against Goku during their training phase, we showed up and mm -hmm. told him, you do this, you get, you get a wipe. So maybe that was his, you know, his opportunity to not ever do it again. Uh, but if he's an angel in training, then I feel like he would get another chance. Now, if this was like Whis, you know, Whis is a, a tendon to a god of destruction. Apparently, he has reached a, a level of wisdom that if he made that mistake, he, he doesn't get a second chance because he should know better. But Mirrors is a angel in training, so... But how long do you have to be an angel in training? What if he's been an angel in training for, like, the past five million years? Not sure. I don't even know what is an angel in training. Yeah. Like, you're kind of like, uh, okay, are we... Like, does he have to wait until a new universe comes um, for him to actually take the reins as the attendant for that one? Um, what would be nice to do was actually the angel for a one of the race one of the race universes of thirteen eighteen, but mm -hmm. that didn't well. So uh, who knows? But uh, I don't know. I feel like we're going to see him again, but I mean, I I very well could be wrong on that one. Yeah, uh, and, and then with the ending too, I know that was something we talked about on the preview of like what the ending is going to be. I think anyone with a brain knew that Vegeta's spirit Fisher thing was yeah. going to get involved somehow, which it did. We knew he was going to, like, as soon as he fused with the Earth, everyone's like, oh, Vegeta's going to help. We thought he was just going to separate him. Then Goku, Kamehameha's him. But that was not the case, that he was trying to separate him, but he was still gaining energy, but he did his part. He threw the energy at Goku twice, and then with Oob coming in, and Goku just smashing the crystal, which I feel like was a crop out, but that was the way that they ended it but now with this villain being defeated in this way it also goes to another running thing with goku that goku hasn't beat a main villain by himself since frieza yeah like any for the people who always say that goku always wins at the end i would say that goku is the one who gets like the last shot but it's always a group effort from jiren to uh, Zamasu to obviously Kid Buu, now Moro. It's never just Goku by himself. Now it's always been a group effort in some way. Yeah, I don't think ever since you know, Dragon Ball and then it transitioned away from even Z, I don't think we'll ever see Goku defeat someone by himself. Yeah. Ever. Even no, Broly, they had to fuse in yeah. the movie, so. Yeah. Um, maybe he defeats like, a secondary villain. Like, you know, if they redid this thing and Goku. Beats uh, seven three. Yeah, uh, wasn't he the one who beat him? Yeah, he yeah. beat him down and then tossed him. Mm -hmm. Or they retreated back up to their ship while Moro was fighting. Yeah. Um, I don't think I don't think we'll ever see. I don't think we'll see anyone ever beat some straight up by himself. The that main is, villain. Is, yeah, because Vegeta will never do it. If, if Vegeta didn't do it in this chapter, I mean, or this arc. I don't think you'll ever see it. Because I thought this chapter, or this arc, I don't know why I keep saying chapter, this arc was setting up Vegeta to be the main the main. Uh, that's before. how it felt for the past two years. Yep. And, you know, he, I mean, he did his thing, but he also did his thing whenever he blasted Cell to help go home. Mm -hmm. He did his thing whenever he helped gather the energy for the spirit bomb against Boo. And, like, that's. That's the role that Gina has, is that he is, he sets you up. Yeah, yeah, he's it. And I just want to talk now, since we're talking about this chapter, and you just brought up the arc. Arc's basically over. So... Maybe a chapter or two, yeah. just, you know, tying up loose ends, and then we'll transition into the... To the next arc, which... Next arc. So now with the Mora arc being over, 
well, main fight being over, what are your thoughts? Like, what did you like about this arc? What did you didn't like? And what would you want to change now that it's over and fresh in your mind? Um, I liked, I liked Moro. Okay. The idea of Moro. He was a, a villain that uh, fought, you know, Green Kai. Mm. I don't understand why he sat in jail for so long. Over 10 million years. Over 10 million years. Um, but, okay. But I, I liked the thought of magic. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, you know, divine energy. It wasn't uh, just brute strength like Broly and Jiren are. Mm -hmm. You know, it added an element of just intrigue. So it didn't have to be physically as strong to get an upper hand on mm -hmm. the Z fight. So that was cool. And um, I liked in the arc what they were doing with Vegeta. Yep. Uh, they gave Vegeta character development whenever he was protecting the Namekians, whenever mm -hmm. he went to Ardrat to try to learn new things. And um, and then I liked I liked that uh, Beerus was an angel. And that Miris was training Goku on how to achieve Ultra Instinct. Mm -hmm. um, then some of the things that happened at the end there, I thought Moro fusing with the Earth was a pretty cool idea. It was very different. Um, it definitely, yep, like I said, different. And all of these things gave us different predictions of what we thought would happen. Now, I think naturally, when you have an idea as to what think will happen or what you hope will happen even whenever the, the thing or whenever whatever happens happen, you're naturally going to sort of dismiss it you know um but i mean i still think that there was room for improvement for how this stuff was delivered um i thought that we introduced grants from kai and, and majin boo was effective in that first fight but Nothing more of that. Mm -hmm. We weren't really. We were given the cop out reason. Boo was sleeping. Like, okay. Boo was sleeping has been an annoyance mm -hmm. for ever. What I just started to think of the Grand Supreme Guy just switch places with Boo and wake up. Yeah. Shouldn't he actually be the Supreme Guy in which Beerus is tied to now? Because he exists still. Yeah. yeah. In the end, it's like, who is. Who is really the Supreme Kai that is tied to Beerus? Mm -hmm. Is it really the East Kai? Like, is he really the one? Or, you know, we've never had clarification on that. So, um, that's uh, something that we're just going to always uh, ponder on. Um, I don't like that it seems that Goku can just go into MUI now. Just with, you know, at will. Mm -hmm. And granted, he was weak there at the end, so that makes sense. Um, I don't like that. I wish maybe there was one more arc. Maybe the next arc I was hoping for that. Um, I am happy, though, that um, Ultra Instinct, uh, Goku needed this. Oh, hold on, I need to pump here. I was going to say, I'm glad that Goku needed assistance to beat Moro, but if Goku wasn't stupid with the worst part of his arc, the Senzu Bean, mm -hmm. then we would not have needed the end. Well, even if you want to go far back, Goku would have would not have mastered MUI if Vegeta would have killed Moro. Because that wouldn't have been needed. Oh, no. Yeah, at the beginning. Because Vegeta, because that's, because when Vegeta was about to finish him off, that's when he absorbed 7-3. Yeah. Yeah, these guys, these guys just talk way too much. So, more. so <laughs> uh, I'm in agreement with that. But yeah, I mean, seven three was sweet. Yeah, um, he was good. He, he was, was good. He was a vil he was a villain that was intriguing, and and uh, I'm glad they introduced him. And I think it's weird that Morrow ate him though. But yeah, he, ate him a whole too. Yeah, Didn't even turn whole. him to candy. Like Boo just yep. ate him. Yep. Um. So. Um. And the last thing that I just wonder about this arc is just that why was there so much sort of you know copying and pasting from the other arcs we've had in Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, you know, like yep. too much similarities with stuff. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that was done on purpose or accident. And um, even with, at the end here, Goku using his newfound divine power to make 
giant aura of himself. I don't watch Naruto, but that was in some of the um, threads that were going around. Yeah, and it's a, that was a copy of, of like the Susano manifestation with certain people of the Uchiha clan. That's what, yeah, a lot of people were calling it that. Now, yeah. full, full disclosure, listeners, I have no idea anything about Naruto. <laughs> I am a Dragon Ball fanatic. <laughs> Maybe I get yeah. my wife on the podcast because she knows a lot more about Naruto than me. Yeah. So, well, that's if you what they guys actually calling. want that, please uh, leave a comment <laughs> in the, um, uh, anywhere that you're listening. Shameless or plug. Whatnot, and try to get my wife on one of these mm-hmm. podcasts. So. But yeah, that's what a lot of people were saying too, and I saw it too. But yeah, with the more arc now, two years done, I'm just going to go backwards. Uh, things I didn't like MUI uh, basically being learned a week after the Tournament of Power. Just in our in our time frame, it's probably been a couple months. But then it went tournament power, Broly, and then Moro, and then now he just knows. Well, first he did the three months with Mirus and was able to master Omen, and then when Mirus dies, he now knows how to go into MUI at will. And I think that's problematic because even one of the pages here, when Goku got the energy pickle, it was like, oh. He's just Super Saiyan Blue. Like, Super Saiyan Blue is not like a Super Saiyan God. Super Saiyan is just chump change. And I don't think that's going to happen to MUI, but it's like, now I'm not sure MUI is going to be the end-all form of this Dragon Ball Super, because sooner or later, now the next bad guy is going to have to be stronger than Moro. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. And that bad guy, but then again, the writing's inconsistent. That bad guy can't be a Fuse person. Because Vegeta just straight up said he could rip out Kami and Nail from Piccolo if he wants to, so you can't have a fusion. So it's going to have to be someone like Jiren, but omega evil and even more sinister and dangerous. So that was one thing I did not like. But going to things I did like, uh, Goku and uh, Vegeta go in their separate paths to train. Um, obviously, Vegeta, with the character development, talking about like all the stuff he did to the Namekians and changing. Uh, Oob Oob slash Boo slash Grand Supreme Kai all being involved. That was cool. But then, I even, I guess one thing I you didn't say is when Moral's army came to Earth before Goku and Vegeta got there, the rest of the Z fighters were fighting, Mm -hmm. which we don't get to see often anymore because it's the Goku and Vegeta show and they're the only ones who continuously get stronger and everyone else is still stuck in the Boo arc unless you're like 17 who was. Last time we saw him was getting eight by cell, but then comes back in super and he's super strong. But everyone else is stuck in the past while those two keep growing. But even Yamcha, they were fighting for Earth. So I'd like to see more of that, them holding their own to an extent before the big bosses come. I think what I liked about them actually fighting is okay, if we're going to have, you know, Goku and Vegeta and like all of these arcs, that's fine. Because like, let's look back to Z. Mm-hmm. Um, so, after Raditz, uh, Goku and Piccolo fought, okay, uh, you had then Vegeta mm-hmm. and Nappa, mm-hmm. where that started off with you know, Piccolo, Yamcha, Tan, and Chaozu and Gohan and Kr- uh, Krillin. fighting, and Krillin, mm-hmm. fighting against them, and then they fought Nappa, cool, and, and it drug out, and it was good, it got involved, mm-hmm. and then they, uh, Goku arrives after some of them killed or injured, and then mm-hmm. Goku is fighting Sweet, and then Krillin, Yakurobi, Gohan help finish it off. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. We had the other Z fighters. Then on Namek, Goku wasn't there until close to the middle end. And we yeah, shut up with Raccoon. Yeah. Yeah. So Krillin and Gohan and Bulma go, and they're fighting and doing their stuff on Namek. Uh, Piccolo shows up. Well, Vegeta shows Vegeta up. Vegeta shows up. And and his stuff. Uh, Piccolo shows up. Cool. And Goku. So then Goku mm-hmm. kind of finishes it off. And at the end, they kind of they get other people involved, yep. like King Kai and uh, Dende and Piccolo. Piccolo. Yeah, yeah, Piccolo comes back. Yep. And cool. So we again had other Z fighters. Thank you. Awesome. Then Cell came along. Goku is again out of action. As he did in those other two arcs with the hard virus. Yeah, but he did start that arc. He started yeah. fighting the, the main 19, people at the yeah, point. Mm-hmm. Um, but fortunately, that was quick enough. Yeah. 
to get him out of the picture. Mm-hmm. So then, again, you still had the Z Fighters going up against uh, Dro in 19, and then going up against Androids, getting their ass kicked, and then Piccolo fuses, and he fights, and then Vegeta trains Trunks, they fight, and then Bam go too. And then, our surprise, Gohan finishes that part. Sweet. And with the modern Boo arc, Goku's at the beginning, and since he comes back, a sweet fight with Vegeta, mm-hmm. and then other Z fighters progress, and then Goku and Vegeta end. So, that's how all of Z was. Super's been kind of a, you know, Goku and Vegeta start, start to finish. Start to finish, yep. And then the Tournament of Power obviously had to involve the other Z fighters, so that was good. And then this arc started off with Goku and Vegeta, and they had to go and do their thing, and then the Z fighters showed up. So I'm in agreement with you. I'm glad that the Z fighters actually did stuff in the meantime. And hopefully in the anime, when slash if it comes back, they kind of elaborate on that more and more. So, so on a scale of 1 to 10 before we get the tie-in chapter, what would you rate the Moro arc? Um, like my natural number is probably like 6 or 7. But I don't want that to come across as being bad. Like a bad six or seven is like a good like six or seven. There's just there was room for improvement, and honestly, I could say they at least lost a single point just because of the sense of being. Mm-hmm. Like, so I mean, if if the sense of being didn't happen and this other stuff, I mean, I'm looking at a seven or eight. That you know, always room for improvement, but also uh, we're critics, so we're always thinking it could be better. Unless it's Endgame. <laughs> Avengers. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I think around six or seven is fair. I actually think if you take... I'm, I actually... I'm just trying to decide between this and Goku Black if this is my favorite arc in Super. I really didn't care for the six for seven. Freeze and Beerus were the movies. Tournament of Power, they were just... From anime to manga, there's so many inconsistencies, but I mean, this arc was very interesting and compelling. So I would, I would say six or seven. We'll see how they tie it up next month, and then that might elevate it. So that's really that's just what I think about it. So. And uh, I do want to do um, a video about wraps, but just on what like our original ideas of the yeah. Chapter were. Oh, yeah, so I think that'd be interesting. It might be a short video, but it'd be uh, something fun yeah. to talk about. Yeah. More, more on the Moro arc, but we are at the 48 minute mark now. So, Mitch, you got anything else you want to say about this chapter and the Moro arc in general? Uh, can't wait to can't wait to see Moro in a video game or on uh, television or on television. Uh, always excited for it. all the voice actors. You always want to hear what they sound like. So uh, I'm just curious if Moro is going to be in Xenoverse 2 or if he's going to be in Xenoverse 3. Mm-hmm. So uh, looks like it's probably going to be Xenoverse 2. They pump out it for the past four yeah. years. Yeah, four years. But I think with the PS5 and Xbox out, uh, the, they have to get a new game on the new Yeah, they'll, they'll get so. a new game. But yeah, with that being said, we will wrap up the manga review and moral review uh thank you mitch for always being a part of these these are always greatly appreciated and thank you to all the listeners wherever you listen on youtube um apple Podcasts, spotify google Podcasts. we appreciate you guys we see that you guys love dragon ball as much as we do so just when you're listening to our stuff especially on youtube leave some comments so that we can see what you guys think so that we can take it back and go over your points you're like oh that person made a good point so just remember to always like uh rate comment subscribe wherever you're at and thank you guys for always listening okay well that that's it for me uh um all of that support and what you guys uh, give to us we truly appreciate it and uh we just uh finally ask you to keep supporting the channel we hope to uh, continue growing and uh, you guys are a big part of that and that's all for me, so I hope you all take care, have a good one, and uh, 
Well, thanks for listening. Talk to you next yep. time. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the L7C podcast. We'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.